We have a big, fat, juicy watch video for you today, so stand by and see an in-depth look at a uh, Franken watch, an amazing Franken watch we call the Two Decks. When a watch is handed down from father to son, it has a, a heart value that's um, above and beyond any physical value, and the story behind it is often as much of a part of the treasure as the uh, physical thing itself. The watch we are looking at today is just such a watch. We call it the Tudex. And, um, Unfortunately, the details that we got on it are a little bit fuzzy, so we're going to have to do our own investigation. So let's uh, strap on our fins and dive in and take a look. My friend Brandon brought this watch for me to look at. He got it from his dad, and his dad has always worn uh, various Rolexes as his everyday watches. This is one Rolex that he didn't buy from an authorized dealer. We think he got it back in the 80s. I want to say right out of the gate that I am not an authority on Rolex in any way, shape, or form, but I have done a lot of research and I am trying to learn. So if any of the stuff, if I get any of this stuff wrong, or if you have similar experiences, please comment you know, down below and uh, um, so that we all can learn something. I'd really appreciate it. At first, blush. I thought this was a Rolex 1680. Um, they were made from 1966 to 1981 and um, it should have had the 1575 movement in it. The 1680 was the first uh, sub to have the date complication in it and it's the same model uh, except for a little later as the red sub, which is so violently treasured today, and I certainly wish I had one, they stopped making the red sub in 1963. Unfortunately, rather than the having the 1575 movement in the watch, it actually has the 1030 movement. It's a much older movement, uh, developed I think in 1950? And they were used on several models, um, the Oyster Perpetual and old subs. As a matter of fact, the original Bond movie sub Mariners had the 1030 movement in them. Although uh, they didn't have the date complication, of course. At first I was worried that the movement was fake. Um, I guess I didn't see any information about a uh, the 1030 movement having a date complication. Later, I realized they just use the base movement and don't add the 5 to the number when they add the date complication and leave it at 1030. And so this is correct, at least in that, you know, at least this isn't a fake movement, I would say. It looks very like a, uh, a rather worn and, and beat up very experienced movement, but it does look like the authentic movement as far as I can tell. The 1030 was uh, non-hacking non and uh, had no quick change date, um, but it does have the, uh, the two-way uh, winding mechanism on the rotor there. It looks like the movement is, runs at 18,000 vibrations per hour, kind of slow. Uh, by modern standards, I suppose, but um, it was very, very solid, very venerable movement of its day. Um, it, it seems to have a 30 to 45 hour power reserve somewhere in there. I'm not sure. I couldn't find anything that told me definitively. So if you have one of these, please let us know uh, in the comments, you know, what time you're getting. This could be a case study on how to make a fake Rolex look real. Yeah, pun intended. The case appears to be from a Tudor Submariner with the date of 1966. Uh, it's too bad that it's not all 
Tudor Submariner from 1966 because those things are worth a fortune. It's marked as the Tudor Submariner, reference 7928, and it's been, the numbers have been polished off uh, between the lugs and um, probably on the back also. Um, do you know if there are any Tudor uh, subs that um, where the back did not have writing on them? I didn't find any references to that and um, so it's possible if if there were some plain ones um, and you'll see in the picture obviously um, if there were some plain ones let me know because uh, that would be really interesting and it would actually make a difference in the value of this watch. As you probably know, the Tudor and the, and the Rolex were very similar manufacturer, pretty much almost the same in, in a lot of cases. Um, so it's a super high quality case. Now we come to the dial. I was thinking the dial looks uh, pretty good, except the, uh, I expected a little bit crisper printing on this, and there were just a few things that didn't really add up. And then on closer look, um, the uh, minute indicators around the edge are not symmetrical so that it looks like the dial um, is a little bit off-center. So at, at the very best I would say this is a uh, an authentic dial that has been reworked and um, and uh, adjusted to fit maybe a slightly different case than it was originally intended to. Or, yeah, what is more likely, it's just some other dial, a fake dial of some sort. But as I started looking at it and doing some more research, I realized that it says 1,000 feet instead of the 660 feet that would be expected on this type of sub. So um, the, the dial would be more appropriate to the uh, 16800 reference um, Submariner. Anyway, that all kind of adds up to not being the right thing in, in the right watch. A retread, if not an outright fake. But I gotta admit, still looks pretty cool. So who knows when this thing was last serviced? And I guess really the, the question is, how much it will it cost to get it serviced? And is it worth getting it serviced, consider, you know, uh, when you take in the, the actual value of the watch? Should you get it serviced and wear it, or should you just keep it as a memento and um, you know display it and, and enjoy it that way? Either one is you know perfectly valid. It's still an heirloom you know from a parent, and um, and it's valuable either way. But um, if you have a watch that's worth five hundred dollars, you might not want to spend. $1,500 getting it working. I've asked two different good watchmakers uh, what it would cost to service this and I was quoted 800 and 1000 And I had really good conversation with especially one of the watchmakers who pointed out some things for me and I'll, I'll try to get really good close-up shots so that you can see them. But um, First off, well, you couldn't see this, but the um, stem is actually too short. You are unable to wind the watch. If you try to wind the watch, it just screws back in. So it's a little bit short. You can't get it out far enough to just wind properly. Stems are, are cheap. You can get you can get stems. I think I saw one for eight dollars, so that's not a that's not a big deal there. The screws that hold the movement into the case uh, have been broken or stripped or they're or something that you can see that they're kind of um, angled and they should be flat. Uh, apparently, this is a common with people who are who are working on these things but don't have experience with them. They um, back the screws out too far and then have problems with them. Who knows what that takes to uh, fix that. Uh, another thing is there's a fair amount of corrosion, and you'll see the pictures, would make it hard to guarantee that the 
that you could maintain the waterproofness of it. You can, of course, do things to the case, you know, grind it down or, you know, make it flat or, you know, try to fill it in or something. Um, but that's a lot of work and expensive to do, of course. Any time you touch one of these things, it's expensive. Common problem with these old guys here, you know, that's just this kind of model, is the, um, the, the winder in the back, the bushings, are worn out and it's um, very very noisy and sloppy um, and apparently you just can't buy those bushings you pretty much have to have them made um, that's gonna take some time also just um, both of the uh, watchmakers said yeah those aren't original hands on there I don't know how you can tell but you can't apparently the bracelet seems to be an authentic, honest-to-God Rolex bracelet. It looks like maybe a slightly newer than the watch, however. It, uh, it definitely looks to be the real thing, which is nice. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my wrist because this is probably the closest I'll get to wearing a Rolex for a while. <laughs> <laughs> the watchmaker put it on backwards. So what do you think? Does that look pretty good? I think it's me. Yes, I do. So what would you do with this? Would you make it a memento or would you spend the money and get it working? I mean, honestly, it looks it looks like a Rolex to me. You get six inches away, you can't tell the difference. Um, it does have Rolex parts. It's got Tudor parts also, which are also Rolex, really. So yes, it is a it's a Franken watch, and I'd say it's not really not really a fake. You know, they used real parts. They just assembled it, and yes, it is uh, meant to deceive. But it's kind of like you know, building a, a Ferrari with Jaguar parts. Um, you know, not quite right, but maybe not that wrong. So, I don't know. Anyway, what would you guys do with this? Would you spend the money and have this put back to where you could wear it every day? Or would you just write it off and say, you know what, we'll just keep it on the mantelpiece and enjoy it that way? Hmm. I honestly don't know which I would do. Yeah, boy, I don't know. That's a tough one. Anyway, please vote. Alrighty, I think I've taken enough of your time. I hope you found this interesting as I did. I learned it just a ton. Uh, I love to get a chance to do the, the, the research on this. That's a closer, close in look at, at a very cool Tudex watch. Wilbur out. Oops, I almost forgot. Um, this, I didn't realize these uh, old guys had bi-directional bezels with no click to them. Uh, just thought that was interesting and I wanted to add that here at the end.